Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World and welcome to my 10 more tips for Civilization 6. So I thought I was done making tips videos for this game but as I continued playing I kept finding more and more interesting stuff to talk about. So I decided to make one last video containing more tips and then now I will start working on other videos for example explaining religion and culture and tourism and all stuff like that. So I hope you'll find these 10 tips useful and let's get started. Tip number one, whenever your units get damaged, you can normally heal them with this fortify until healed button, which basically means they'll fortify, which will increase their defenses and then until they are healed. However, sometimes you might notice that they're not healing. For example, this tank here will never heal up whenever I click this. And the reason for that we can actually find in the Civilopedia if we type in tank, we can see that one of the production requirements for the tank is oil. Now, when I built this tank, I had a trade agreement with Egypt that they would give me oil, so I managed to make the tank. However, you also need to have access to that resource, the strategic resource, in order to heal units that normally require it for their production. So if you don't have access to that strategic resource anymore, as you can see, I don't have access to oil at all, then I cannot repair a unit that needs oil for its production. So be sure that you always have the strategic resources for your units to heal. Tip number two, buildings that provide an area of effect bonus, for example the zoo, let's type it in here. The zoo gives one amenity from entertainment, but it actually extends this to each city center within six tiles. So here is the zoo from Militos, and it is within six tiles of this city here. So we can look at its entertainment amenities, and we can see that it's three, and that's because, well, we have an entertainment complex for one, arena for two, and then number three is because of this zoo. Now, Militos itself has also entertainment three, and that's because it has entertainment complex for one, arena for two, and zoo for three. So this one here has finished almost its zoo, so let's end the turn and then it will be finished. And here we go, now the turn is finished and we can click here on this one and we can see that now its amenities have increased to four. But here Militos, which already had a zoo, also had its amenities increased to four. So zoos and all other buildings that basically provide an area of effect, they stack. Tip number three, be sure to check the Great Peoples tab once in a while. The Great Peoples tab shows you which Great People are currently available for recruitment. Of course you need to gather the appropriate points normally to recruit them, but it's a race. Basically here for example, I am not first, so the first person to be able to recruit this one will probably be Egypt. So let's say I really wanted this one, then I have a problem because I'm not gathering enough of these great writer points per turn to actually get this one. Well, there is a way to get away from this. You can immediately recruit them. Let's say I really want to have this one for whatever reason, then I could spend either gold or faith if you have enough, and then just spend it to immediately recruit it and steal it away from the person in first place. You can also do that defensively, of course. For example, here, this one is actually quite nice. It grants two perfume which is a uniquely manufactured luxury resource with plus six amenities instead of plus four. Of course, now I am ahead, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'll get it because if now any of these other players decide to buy it with faith or gold, then I can never recruit it anymore. So just to be sure, I could spend the faith to definitely have this person. So be, be sure to check this tab once in a while and check what's available and to see if it's worth it for your empire because there's definitely a lot of great people that are really worth having. Tip number four, be aware of city states and make sure to put envoys in the ones that you think are important. For example, here, if I click on the city states here, you can see that I've been putting envoys in most of the ones that give me culture. However, I have a lot of envoys in Jakarta. And the reason for that is I wanted to be the person with the most envoys in there because then you get their unique bonuses. And well, this unique bonus didn't really matter for the, me that much. However, if you see the last point, gain ownership of all the city states resources and your builder units may improve city state tiles. Now, I happen to be playing a map where this oil one is the only oil in this entire place. This entire island doesn't have any oil except for this little place. So it's really good to have Jakarta because then basically with your builder, you can say build me an offshore oil rig. And once I have that, then Jakarta will be providing me with that oil as you can now also see there. So if 
there are nice strategic resources in there or luxury resources or whatever, then you will gain access to them all if you are the person that has the most envoys in there. And that can definitely make a difference, especially if you play on a little bit of a weird map like I am doing now. Tip number five, late in the game the turns can take absolute ages and that's because every civilization has a lot of units to move as well as every city state, so the turns take a lot of time. So before I go into how to alleviate that, let's first measure how long a turn takes at the moment. All right, that was 34 seconds. So now I will first load up the game again to be in the same state, and then we will measure it again after clicking an option. So let me load the game first. Alrighty, here we are again. It's exactly the same turn. I just loaded it again. And last time we spent 34 seconds to pass a turn. Now, if we go to options, you can go to game, quick movement and enable that. If you want, you can also do quick combat, but I kind of like to see the animation, so I, I don't do that yet. But uh, quick movement enabled, confirm. And now we end turn again, and I will start my timer again. All right, so that was 13.65 seconds. So it's basically two and a half, three times as fast as uh, it is without that option enabled. And as you can see, I'm already in turn 472. So if you spend 30 seconds per turn, then already in 100 turns, you've basically spent 50 minutes of waiting time. So it's definitely worth clicking this, at, especially in the, in the late game where, well, the turns just take ages. Tip number six, be aware that you can relocate traders. Very often when a trader basically finishes, it asks you, what do you want to do now? And it gives you this menu of where do you want to send it now? But maybe at some point you might want to relocate them. For example, I am now building a spaceport in Sparta and I could use some extra production. So maybe it would be better to first send a trader by doing transfer to another city, Sparta, then it will go there. And then once it's there, I can make it go trading and then I get like five or four production per turn more. So it's definitely worth putting your traders exactly in the cities where you need them at some point, for example, to get food or production or whatever you need. Tip number seven, sometimes you might be wondering why an empire suddenly dislikes you or declares war on you, even though you seemingly didn't really do anything wrong. However, that's because they now have a personality and that personality is decided on the beginning of the game. Each empire has one personality thing that they always have and one randomly chosen. For example here, Pedro II. He's got his two agendas. One of them is patron of the arts, where he likes civilizations who are not competing for great people and will recruit great people whenever possible, dislikes losing a great person to another civilization. So that is something that might really make him angry. However, he also has one hidden agenda, which I cannot see. And for that, I need to reach access level open. And you can do that, for example, by um, researching the printing press or spying on him or establishing trade routes, basically you will get a higher access level. For example, I think I have a spy there now, yes. So we could do this one here, listening post. Increases diplomatic visibility by one rank. So I do that and I'm not sure if that's already this round or the next one, let's see. There we go. Yeah, now we have open and then we can see that he's an environmentalist, builds national parks, doesn't clear features, plants, forests, like civilizations that plants forest or found national parks, dislike civilizations that clear features. So here is typically a thing that you think you're doing nothing wrong, you're just clearing some features in your own land and suddenly he hates you. But now at least you know the reason why and you can play according to this. If, for example, you have an alliance with someone and you don't want to piss him off, then it might be good to look at the agendas to see what they like and what they dislike.
Tip number eight. Sometimes you might be wondering why one city can't build a district and the other one can. For example here, these ones both have 18 people and this one is building a spaceport, but Sparta can't because Sparta, if you click on spaceport, it says it actually needs 19 or greater. Why is that? Why does Sparta need 19 population but Ephesus is already building it with 18 people? That seems unfair. Well, I just did some calculation and it seems that the amount of population that you have influences the amount of districts you can place. And in such a way that from 0 to 3 population you can place one district, then from 4 to 6 population you can place two districts, and so on. So for example here we have 18, so divided by 3 that should be 6 districts. And if we click here we can see that there are 6 possible districts. But Ephesus actually only constructed five until now and Sparta is already full of districts so this one cannot build the space station anymore. If we then look at Mycenae for example, well we, we see eight so that should be three possible districts. So if we click here we can see that that's indeed the case because zero to three is one, four to six is two and eight, uh, seven to nine is three. Let's do one more as an example, here's 13. So that should be four times three is 12, and then one more district than that is five. So four times three is four districts, plus one is five. So be careful to not just build districts because you can, because that might bite you in the butt later when you want to build a district and you can't. For example, that's a problem I now have with Sparta, where I wanted to build a space station, but I can't at the moment until I grow my population to 19. Tip number nine. One thing that this game is definitely missing is options to rebind more keys. For example, there are a couple of here in options where you can change some things, but it would be nice to have more options, especially me as a right-handed person. I would like to basically do everything with the mouse, but then scrolling I would like to do with WASD instead of with the arrow keys. You can of course do it with your mouse, but I prefer to use the keyboard for that. However, the game basically decided for you that you have to do it with the arrow keys, which is a bit annoying. However, a user on Reddit called Xaceous, or Xaceous, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, found out how you can change that by digging into the LUA files. So basically what you have to go do is go to your civilization install directory and then go to base assets UI and then find the file called world input.lua. There you will find a line called default key down handler. You should search for this because the file is quite long and there you will find a couple of sentences. If UI key is keys.vk up then a lot of stuff. You can add to these uh, as you can see here in my picture you can add to vk up or UI key equals keys.w and that basically makes sure that the W key does the same as the up key. However, you also need to make sure that underneath default key down handler is key fold, default key up handler. And there you need to change the same things. So as you can see here in these pictures that I'm showing, that's basically the things that you have to change. So for every key up, right, down, left, you need to add or UI key equal equal keys dot WDSA. And then you can scroll with WASD. You can even change this while playing the game. You don't need to restart the game for that. So you can test out whether you made a mistake or not immediately. There are many more things you can actually change and I will link to the Reddit thread that uh, basically shows you how to do all of these things because there's a couple of really cool options um, that you can add by digging into these files. Tip number 10, let's say you want to build some walls and you click on the production menu and you can see medieval walls here, but it says this building requires an ancient wall building. And I'm pretty sure I actually built that, so let's see. And indeed, I did build ancient wall in the city. So what's wrong? Well, the reason I cannot build this, it's actually written in a bit of a weird way. It's because I have been sieged before and my walls are actually a bit damaged. But there doesn't really seem to be a good way to actually see that. So what I have to do is scroll all the way down and then you can see a project called Repair Outer Defenses. And in this case it cost me one turn and then these walls will be repaired. And once they are repaired then I will be able to uh, make my medieval walls. So I can do that. Let me click on Repair Outer Defenses, click on Next Turn. Here we go. So now the walls are repaired and now I can actually make my medieval walls. So if you need to repair anything, then you can do that at the bottom at projects. 
So these were the 10 more tips for Civilization 6. I hope you found them useful and see you next time.